So we opened the Deerfield Planning Board meeting at 6 o'clock this evening, and the first agenda item was an executive session uh, to discuss strategy with respect to pending litigation, where an open meeting may be detrimental effect on the litigating position of the board, and the chair also so declares, namely South Deerfield DG Series LLC versus John Waite et al. You guys are et al. Et al. Et al. Land court docket number 19. So now we are reopening our... Uh, uh, or then we closed our executive session, and now we're reopening our Deerfield Planning Board for July 15th, 2019, 7 o'clock here in the town hall. Um, we have draft minutes from the... 720, 720 sorry. Uh, we have draft minutes from the previous meeting. We'll review mail. We'll take public comment. Then we have a couple new businesses. There's an A&R on Sand Gully Road. And there is a uh, something about Grow Space New England, represented by Robert Wolf informal discussion about possible marijuana project in Deerfield. Then we were going to discuss uh, some changes to our zoning bylaws relative to marijuana cultivation and sales, solar specifications, lot shape restrictions, and accessory apartments. So that's just a discussion. Then we do any other business not reasonably anticipated 48 hours prior to the posting of this meeting. Then we'll set a date for the next meeting, which will probably be August 5th, the first Monday of um, of August, then we'll adjourn. Any other, anything else for the agenda? And um, so it's, uh, we have a full board, so let's say who we are so people know. You want to? Uh, and Mary Studier, Rachel Blaine, John Wheat, Kip Camosa, Paul Alice, Roger Sadowski, Max Antes. Great, thanks for everybody coming. Um, so the minutes we have are draft, and I don't think anybody's, Sorry. we only have one copy, so should we Sorry. hold them till next time? And, sure. But we. Um, but I did, I did actually, uh, I'll make a copy for you too, Roger. I just, I sent it around via email. And what was the date of that meeting? 25th of June. June 25th. Okay. So it's being tabled now? Basically. Yes. Okay. See, from the a positive determination. Review mail. We got one uh, good piece of mail I want to read is that um, if you all remember Sun's Mass at 198 Mill Village Road, we had made a decision a while ago for that um, it's, it's uh, cultivation of marijuana. And, um, but we were a little late getting our decision in. In the meantime, the applicant um, had filed a notice of construction in of constructive grant, which means they could have just moved ahead without waiting for our decision. But the attorney for that, for Sun Mass, said, um, on behalf of Sun Mass, um, whereas the planning board has now filed its decision with your office relating to the special permit, site plan approval, and stormwater permit, I hereby withdraw the notice of constructive grant dated June 13, 2019. So our decision is now the, on record. And um, that was. Thank you. We, thank, thank you, thank Kip, you for thank uh, you, John. I mean, for doing that, and uh, for people who got that together. But it just that was an example of that we had lost some of our administrative help during that time, and we got really behind. So we're going to see that letter, John. And try not to do that again. <laughs> um, but we still need administrative help. Yes. <laughs> Let's make that clear. Any other mail that looks interesting? Uh, we can go through it as we go into the next item. Um, does anybody from the public have any comments that are not on the agenda already for tonight? Looks like the crowd is here for other agenda items, so we'll move along. New business, A&R for Sand Gully Road. Um, and I have that right in front of me. Are you here for that? Yes, sir. You want to... Um, Randy Eisen from Harold Eaton Associates. Do we have... Um, you're right there. Oh. I have... Uh, so, so let me just read that this is um, this was filed. I have the A and R application form. You want to transfer land between two parties to create a conforming lot and to make another lot look aesthetically better. We thank you for emailing this out to us also, so I was able to look yeah, at it earlier, I and I think it was pretty self explanatory <laughs> which is nice. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't get it. So I'm glad to. I like the color. Well, it's just easier to explain because yes. of the, the, the potential confusion. 
So we have two of others. One is. Could you would you mind sitting at the microphone because we do have people listening back at home and who don't. Uh, I know. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. So we have two abutters. One is the Gardeners. The other is Salter and Mori. The Gardener property is the one that's outlined in pink. The Salter Mori is outlined in blue. Uh, what's happening is you'll see a parcel A, part of the blue lot, and that is being transferred to Gardener. And then parcel B, the pink triangular lot, is being transferred to Salter and Maury. So currently Gardner's lot, this weird looking thing with a point, finger pointing to the north, was non-conforming. It did not contain enough area to satisfy zoning. So uh, the neighbor agreed to transfer land to Gardner and Gardner transferring to the neighbor to make a conforming lot for Gardner and the Salter Maury lot will remain conforming. It will It'll lose, I mean, he's given up 6,800 square feet and gaining 5,600 square feet. So he's a little bit less than he started with, but he still will conform to zoning. So who gets the box? The box, now the, the parcel A box. Because that the, goes the, to them. the frontage is already with them, yeah, yeah, so yeah. that becomes a hole. So yeah, it becomes yeah, yeah. a rectangle. Like so it they should become be. a, yeah. yeah. And the, they each become more of a rectangle. And Salter Mori looks yeah. like yeah, they have, right, and they've got more frontage on Sand Gully Road than yep. they had previously. So I hope that this was not, however this came about, wasn't during our time on the it's probably a road. planning board. This is, must be I think it was when 91 was put in. in. Yeah, it was, it was the remainder of a, another parcel, and it was not, oh, it was not, it was known that it was not buildable when, when uh, yeah. it was purchased originally. So there was nothing that was created that was uh, afoul of anything. Any, any comments about this? It nope. seems to make a lot of sense. And the frontage for that, for lot two is Lee Road or is it, must have been Lee It's Road. currently Lee Road, yes. And I would imagine it'll stay that way. But this would allow them to have a lot of frontage on another road. Yes. Mm -hmm. So. All right. Any other questions? And, and, and just out of curiosity, Gregory uh, Gardner, what did he need that square piece for? He needed. It's not really relevant. Or was it because of this funny Paul. angle on the, on the lot before? Paul? Yeah. I'm, I'm listening, John. All right. I'm listening to you. It's not a relevant question for our for an A and R. Is all I'm saying. I'll be happy to answer if if you'd like. It's pretty it's fine. To, you know, it's just, just he I he did not have enough area we, previously. He was short like a thousand square feet or something like that. Okay. To right. to be a, a legitimate building lot. Okay. Hmm. Any motion? I move that we endorse the. ANR as presented. I second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Oppose? Abstain? Seven. Okay. Zero, Thank zero. you. I, I don't recall your process. Do I we, get the plan now or do yeah, I pick it so up? We'll sign, is there a mylar? Oh, right, yes, right. Right. We'll sign our mylar and a couple other copies for you and then keep a couple for um, okay. one for the Excellent. Building inspector and one for the planning board. Thank you. And I think one for the assessors you should. Pat, do you want to sign any? Mm. Oh, just the front of the table. Sign. All right, thank you. Oh, well, I mean, one. Right? Good. Good. There's like kismet in there. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. <laughs> Roger, I made sure there were seven lines yeah. on there so everybody oh, okay. can sign. All right. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Start signing over there. All right, get to it, everybody. It was an efficient decision, so we have time now to sign it.
Thank you for the clarity of lines. Yes. I love the color. I went onto the maps and it was like that weird. I in the mylar, you can sign in. Pencil? Yeah. Like you can sign in. We just always use a Sharpie, but ever since we discovered that we didn't need you. I know. <laughs> see and no one. one's... See, little, no one's complained yet. No one's sent it back to us. As long as it doesn't smudge, they won't care. Right, exactly. They don't even keep the mylars anymore. You do scan them and just... They take it, they take it from the registry, they scan it and give it right back. Okay. They don't have room for the files anymore. They must make electronic copy or something. Yeah. And the Chinese fry all the computers. <laughs> yeah, it's it's kind of sad they got rid of everything hey, because there's right. older plans nice. that oh, okay. online they, they didn't do a good job scanning and you can't read them, them and then you go to the registry they don't <laughs> have it anymore. Wow. No, no, the Chinese have it. No, they did they just offer to give them to like on billions of owners of the property. Yeah, or I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Probably not. Probably, probably not is right. Threw them in the dumpster and that was that. Yeah. I know when an engineering firm went out, they you had they had plans of yours. They offered if you wanted them. That was nice of them. So I'm just looking at some mail here. There's a uh, request for a uh, permit to re renovation of an existing greenhouse for marijuana cultivation in Wheatley. At, on Christian Lane, not too far away. That's um, meeting on June 6th. Well, oh, they had a public hearing already. Right? And then on the other side of us is another um, public hearing uh, for Greenfield Green River Cannabis Company. Uh, Property located at 398 Deerfield Street. That's uh, operation of a marijuana retail establishment at this location. There you go. And then they have two, uh, Deerfield has two hearings on um, accessory apartments. Apparently, they need, they need special permits. That's something we're going to talk about later. Maybe. Interesting there. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, I um, have a discussion with someone from Gross Space New England. How many of these do you want? We need um, three. three. Give you three, then I have your last six. Are you here for grow space? I'm not. Uh, you're, you're here for grow space? Yeah. Oh, guess we're not going to have. I know there's two more. Came to say hi to it. We're not going to have much. We already. Um, Three. Dick, a few minutes ago, I read your letter thanking, and we oh. thanked you for uh, withdrawing your constructive grant, and we're sorry about the delay, but we're glad we got the decision in, and it was worked out okay. So. so now we can look you in the eye, yeah. reach you friendly on the street. We don't have to dodge it across the road when we. I'm only looking for. 
Thank you. Does anybody Thank you have any knowledge of what grow space wanted to talk to us about? Or? Growing space? No clues. Oh, growing something grow in space. space New England. Yeah. Space to grow. Marijuana. Yeah. All right. They're waiting for the building and we'll have to get them to the test. So then we can uh, go into our new business, which is um, kind of start a discussion about our changes that we want to make in, um, in our zoning bylaws. So how do we want to proceed with this? We kind of have a, several different categories. Mm -hmm. um, and I think some of them are going to, well, they're all going to require public hearings at some point. Okay. So well, know, let's take the, the solar one because that seems to be the easiest. <laughs> I agree, I agree. And also pretty I pressing. Think, I think with our solar thing that we should be concerned with just the area of land and not the size of the system. When I say size, area of land. I don't necessarily mean the physical footprint, size. The footprint of it. No, but how much energy it produces. I, I agree. Wait a minute, just say that again. I thought I, I, I Wait, so yeah. not the not so the not land. the area of land, how much it produces. Our, our bylaw should not be concerned with the amount of energy it produces, only with the area yeah, okay, that good. it right. consumes. Good, good, good. Kill, uh, yeah, a square feet versus kilo. Right. Yeah. So then how do we start to determine, start to set out the, the square footage? Uh, we know, well, actually, uh, what do we know? The maximum, I think Massachusetts allows is six megawatts, right? So right. Now, we, oh, but we don't care. Well, we do care because they care, but what we're, but in terms of our bylaws, we're not going to be as. Can I ask why? By the, the, well, because the was there anything saying how many acres or square footage a solar field could be? Well, our our bylaw now says that if you go to a certain size, it's some are allowed, and the, the larger you get, the, the more uh, different areas that you need to be in. Some are by special permits. I don't necessarily, it, that's okay if we go by how large of an area it takes on, but I don't think we should uh, tie it to how many kilowatts it I, I, I think everybody agrees with you, Kip. I was just wondering if there was something saying you can only use 100 square feet or 200 square feet. No, we... Well, we, right now, I'll read the extra, so just so we know, we have, we have large and extra large, right? Extra large... Extra large scale ground mounted solar electric installation shall mean a ground mounted solar system with generating capacity of greater than two megawatts or occupying more than 10 acres. I think we should just get rid of 10 the, acres. So though. just leave it at 10 acres and get rid of yeah. the, the megawatts. So if it's 10 acres or more, we should consider it extra large yes. and, that we, and then we have a bunch of criteria right. that we look at. If it's between, if it's, and then we go for the, this, then we have the residential versus large, right? Large scale uh, does not occupy more than 10, so it's less than 10. So what's what's um? Uh, where's the other one? The ground, just the uh, residential one. Well, doesn't the power company dictate? Yes, it does. Right. Yep. So it's not even. I think it's you have to be approved. You have to well, be approved. The state. The state dictates that. Power company also, you have to get permission to what you're going to do. But right, they have to. They, right. have they don't to. want you generating more than you're going to consume, like the impression I'm under, as much as right. I know about it. Well, when I got my solar panels, I had to go and get uh, apply to the to the power company to accept the power that my panels were rated at. Right. Small scale. And then once that got done, and then I could start putting it on the on the, on the grid. Right. So that had to be done with the power company. That had nothing to do with the state, as far as I know. No, no if you were the state limits how big of these big ones. Yours is not, you know, is not that big. Yeah, most residentials are going to be under 10, yeah. uh, under 10 megawatts. So. Now, if you were commercial, you know, uh, whatever you do, do they dictate also that you can only have enough solar panels, just what you're going to consume, like? Well, that's the theory, if you're using it for consumption. Like if I have a machine shop and, and I use, you know, a thousand kilowatts an hour, then that's that's the idea. But you can go a little bigger just to well, cover. Well, right, because of bad days and stuff. I understand sure. that. But I knew you couldn't, like, you're only going to use a, a thousand, like you said. Right. You couldn't put one in for five thousand. Mm -hmm. 
So we've got three different definitions right now. One is small scale, and all that says is 10 kilowatt or less, so we have no size on that one. And is that generally just residential? 10 yes. Kilowatts. That's not very big. 10 kilowatts, yeah, that's, that's what most, my, mine is rated just under that. And, and more, they're getting more powerful, so more residentials are probably going to have bigger than that. And we don't really want to get involved in that, do we? So, no, it, well, no, I don't think so. Because right now, small scale is just, it's, it's yes everywhere. Yeah. You don't even, it's by I, think I'd leave, I think I'd leave it where it is, even, yep. even if we don't change and take off the power output, just um, un until something comes up that says we need to change it. Yeah, I think, I think if we just leave everything the way it is and just get rid of the uh, kilowatts from where. Right, but what I'm saying is the small scale doesn't have a size. Doesn't have a size, it doesn't yeah. Have a, it doesn't say how many square feet. How many square feet. It only yeah. says the kilowatt. So we have to add, now we have to say. All right. So what's, what's the large one, John? 10 acres? Then we have, then we have this uh, large, up to 10 acres. Up to 10 acres. So why don't we say the small is three acres? No, I don't think even that. I think it's no. meant to be what's on your roof. Right? Yeah, by right is what we want people well, to people no, just be able to put on their roof or on a pole outside the house. I don't think you, you can't restrict how much you put on the roof. We're talking about ground mounting. Yeah, these are all. I mean, because they're small scale ground mounted, so. Yeah. Right. Right. On the roof doesn't matter. Right. That's so I don't think right. we want to say by right three acres. Three. You, you know, people don't want three acres just everywhere. Just, just without some kind of permit. So that's yeah, but too much. Like I said, I, I, I if you put it up, I don't think you could huh. do so it unless you were going to consume it. Like Kip said, if you had a big machine shop. You can sell it back to the grid. They don't. I mean, they. You can put it back on the grid and, and you can give it to someone else. Meeting, right. Of of they, it out they don't, well, and we that's, that's not what they projects, want you to do. That's why no, but as Paul says, mine and his are getting up towards 10 kilowatts, so pretty soon people will be putting up 15, 20 kilowatts. That's yep. not a big deal. It's not a big system, but I think yeah. people are going to be doing it. We don't want to make it hard for them. I, 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 but what's, the, but it's the measurements, the, uh, you know, what's the square footage? Yeah, you want to put a, large. you want to put a number on that? Well, I think, if we put a number on it, might it, it be kind of arbitrary yeah. at this yeah. point? So that doesn't seem to be like good planning to I, me. I, I think maybe we could just say something like well, for, for consumption of the, of the person on the, on the residential property. And then, you know, because you're not going to... How are you going to monitor? So can I, can I just remind us? So we have to have a public hearing on this. And so anyway. we can get more input from people who know this stuff. Right, right, right. So I think we just want to frame the question right here. So I think you framed it. We want, to start, we want to change our three different categories to square footage or acres, not power. Right. So I think we can have a public hearing and say we're proposing on those other two getting rid of the acre thing. I mean, getting getting rid of the number, the kilowatt, and leaving the acres. Right. So the only one we don't really know about is the small. small. And I think we need more information. Because some people well, don't put them on their roofs. They'll have a ground mount. Right. But yeah. typically, they use the same, you know, equation that it can't produce more than ninety percent. Right. So it seems to me like if we tied it to that, yeah, that more than you, the way they sell them is you can't use more than ninety. It can't make more than ninety-five percent of your electricity. That's not how mine is. I I have one that makes about one hundred fifty of what I use, so it, huh. I can sell it. I can put it back on the grid. Oh, the ones that they sell commercially typically right but i own if you own your own and you can have it as big as you know okay you can, you can have it bigger and give it to your fellow right you yourself. could sell it back, right. whatever and i think that's going to happen more we'll see more of that anyway. right because right. you might have a relative or whatever that doesn't have a good right. sunny spot and right. you could yeah see. but the other the other thing that's going to happen too that i think we need to factor in is that some people don't own the solar panels and the company that puts them on there decides how much power is going to be generated so that piece is that out of happens. control of the of the homeowner. They won't give you a loan for anything other than their calculation of what you should put. You know. Well, no, I'm saying beyond that, you you get you get so much off of your electric bill every month, but you yeah. don't have to pay the mortgage on it. It's owned by the company that comes and puts it on your home, and that's the piece that could be a, a problematic piece. I would say, but you know, when the when the resident is doing using it and buying it and putting it on his own home. Then I'd say whatever you know. I, I don't see that. Uh, Aren't the roof mounts? Those are by right. We're not. 
Yeah, yeah. We're not talking about we're talking, not. this is pole mount, this is ground all mounted. Ground ground mount. So here's something to think about. Well, the largest I bet the largest ground mount that they have. So I, that's seven point nine two. Uh, megawatts. So, you, so yeah. what happens if well, somebody put up ten of them? You could put two of them. Right. Yeah. You could put two of them there. Yeah. I guess what, what I was thinking about is that maybe tying this into a certain amount of area of land, like I see both of yours, and where you live, it's virtually unseen by everybody. Yeah. And yours is you live in a more compact area. What happens if somebody on Grave Street decides that they want to put two or three up, and how it, the people next door all they're going to see is these solar panels? Right. Well, they explained it to me that you can't you can't be closer than 50 foot um, with them, or they won't work. They won't you won't take advantage of the of the power they generate. Would it shadow or something? Paul? Yeah, it would shadow it because that thing starts and it swings over 180 degrees in a day. This is a tracking tracking, yeah. so that tracks the tracks the sun, and so yeah. that because of that, they told me if I say I wanted to put a second one there, which I don't, but you can't you can't put them any closer than 50 feet, so you could have the space to do it. But what you're talking about is almost like what we do with impervious surface. It's like it, right. it should be based on the percentage of your right. Because land if, if you know, for people who live and have plenty of land, I don't see that it's an issue. Right. You know, if your neighbors and we've heard plenty of that for it. So there are some people in town who just don't like to look at solar panels, and I and I understand that. But if you're in a very well, confined area, boring, and all of a sudden somebody only has a third of an acre and they want to cover. 50% of their lot with solar panels, I, I don't think that that's a good idea. Because, you know, we part of planning is to protect the people next, next to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know, though. Like, if we have a hoarder in our town and they have their garbage all over the outside, I mean, we don't really have an opinion about that, do we? Yes, we, we, don't do. Know. we do. Yeah, we do. We've huh. had that. <laughs> yeah. huh. I guess I see a lot of hoarders, so I'm confused about that. <laughs> yes. Well, hoarders versus garbage, it's a. Huh. One person's treasure. <laughs> <laughs> on their lawn. Yep. So it seems like we're now we're thinking it should be based on a percentage of the, of the land. Property. Yeah. I mean, and maybe I, I different know. zones need different, uh, you know, center village might need a different number than yeah. residential acres. I think for that small one, I, I would say, you know, like um, Anne Marie's saying, 95% of what you would use. Um, for your own personal consumption, but that's uh, not the but that, yeah, it, yeah, planning. Yeah. We're talking about. No, well, that's what I, I, you're asking. What it is? But I, well, I guess can, I'm also you saying can out, you can you can you can shoot it down if you want. But okay. I don't I don't think, I don't that's, think that's a good a good way of dictating yeah. the size of the thing. It's no. too. Uh, and next year, maybe you add an right. electric heating system, and you need more. It's right. Like, yeah, that's what I was going to say. Your yeah. usage changes. Kind of your family grows, or whatever. Okay. I don't know the answer for that one. But it should be. Yeah. Well, what if we stick to kilowatts and just up it from 10 to 20 or something? Let's see how that is. For residential? For residential. For the small. Just for the small scale. Thing. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's what I'm, I knew that. But. And then, yeah. Because I think we don't want to have industrial, commercial, Yeah, I solar, understand totally. I agree with you. I think that's probably what we're trying to avoid. Oh, say that again? Oh. You don't want commercial on residential properties? Yeah. Well, all of them, well, the one over on Set Right Road is residential area. And that's a pretty big one. Residential. residential. Yeah, I, you, oh, John, yeah, I know right. what John is yeah, saying. I he know. means like a I know what you're saying. Center village. Someone's house. I think that's, yeah. Right. Yeah. that's yeah. why we're. That's an open field, but it is agricultural. But you're right, RA is houses and fields. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Farm, uh, but RA is different from Center Village. So yeah, that's that's the kind of thing that we would make a distinction between the different zones, not necessarily yeah, RA, yeah. but. Or, or do um, you know, some size, but then make it a special permit if it's bigger than that. Because so. mm -hmm. then it, then you can say, oh, well, you know, you've got four acres and it's only going to be a piece of it. It's not a big deal. Right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. maybe that's the way to handle it. That might be, yeah. Yeah. Leave it as right for small ones, but then especially when it gets a little bigger. Mm -hmm. Because then you're you're allowing. So are you going to use you. kilowatts or something to dictate, and then are you going to put I mean, in? Using kilowatts are changing so quickly, right? Partly that. Uh, well, that's one of the things that we we're interested. Well, the same pan the same panel will will do almost sixty percent more power yeah. now than it did two years exactly. ago. Right? So that's and where that's we're really going to get better. And but I still I still have a concern if somebody's. Um, 
putting them on, it's not the owner of the, they don't own the panels, then you're a commercial, it's a commercial operation at that point. It's not a, it's not residential anymore. Yeah, but that's like saying somebody who rents a water heater. That's not a commercial. You know, right. You, you, you get a rented water heater from the gas company. So, you know, what we could do, um, what you were sort of talking about is if we take what 10 kilowatts was three years ago when we did this, what's the square footage of that? And kind of use that as, mm -hmm. as our baseline. Yep. Maybe go a little bit bigger and say, okay, if it's bigger than this, you need a special permit. Yeah, that's a good thought. Because that's so. probably why we, you know, that's kind of how we put yep. up that yep. 10 kilowatts. That'd be pretty easy to figure, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. I'm thinking, I think what's yours, man? like, I'm sorry, what was that? feet by 12 feet or something. No, it's much bigger. Oh, no, no, it's yeah. bigger than that. Mine's bigger than that. It's the biggest one that they made. So I don't, it's, it's um, 30, 33 by 66, and it's 24 panels, so you just have to do the math. All right, so you're so thinking 66 you, uh, feet wide? No, 66 inches by 33 inches oh. per panel. And that's uh, and that each one of those, um, you know, you're going to have. I think I think it's um, 33 times six, and then 66 times four. So you get that. That's your. That's the size of that that panel. Can we give you that homework to find out what oh, square footage? Yeah, definitely. Your, definitely. And, and then if you see what it would be if it's a ten if it's a ten kilowatt, so it would be bigger than yours even. He said he, that's the biggest. That's tracking the biggest one. tracking one they make. Oh, okay. Because uh, I would have gotten a little bigger. Square footage wise, anyway. Right. This one didn't cover my usage, so. Okay. So it'd be good to know then yeah. what your total square That's footage is. Okay, all right, I can do that. And then I don't know if we have a. Is there an issue about how high the pole can be or something? Or is that, you call it ground mounted, but some are higher or lower? Like they, they say. They, they try to keep it as low as possible. Yeah, cause because of the wind. But that could that. be an issue, like in a neighborhood. Exactly. Yeah. And I was going to say that, you know, if you just had the ones that were stationary, they're sort of low profile. Yeah. This thing, you know, protrudes Well, out. actually, if the wind goes, if the wind goes over it's 20 miles per hour, the, the thing take what they call you tabletops. It just goes flat. Who's taking notes? Oh, Paul. 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 Yep. Yeah. I mean, what's that? What's... Well, just this discussion, I can yep. make sure we... Isn't it on right. Eastern or Graves? Somebody has them in their backyard? There's three panels of them in their backyard. If you have them on the ground, they're going to be lower. But mm. there, um, there's, uh, there's uh, somebody built a shed on Grave Street, and they put their, and I, they created the shed, but that's they did it for a solar panel. Yeah. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. I feel like there's one on Eastern Ave too. Next time I'm walking, I'll take a picture of it. Yeah, I'm not familiar, but yeah, it could be. I know right. that, that I know that that one that uh, uh, what's her the like Chang built when they put that new multi-unit or whatever place there on uh, Circulo Street. Yeah. And they put 60 panels on the roof of that thing. So it generates a, a significant amount of power there. Maybe I am thinking of Green Street. Maybe All right, so that's our that. homework. Does anybody else want to take on that or you get it? Yeah, so the, the, large, the large area is going to be, what was the land covered on that, on the large one? 10 acres. No, so large, large is up to 10, so whatever. Up to 10. Whatever this okay. is, between yeah. whatever this is and up to 10 is large, and then over 10 is extra large. And is there a uh, okay. square footage for the extra large? No. No, acres. anything over 10. We're talking There's acres. There's no limit Also, oh, they that. could go 30 acres if they wanted to? Okay, like, I thought maybe yeah. there was a... No, like the one in the quarry, 18, I don't remember, right? I don't remember. The other one over here was 10 acres. Wow. The, the reason you wouldn't go 30 acres is only because then it becomes too big of a size, and currently you can't do that. Okay. But there are still ways around that because there's a, uh, one in Warren that I think is almost 70 acres. But when you look into it, there are actually five or six different, you know, fields. So they classify them as separate fields, but they're really all in one area. But they're they're linking to the grid in different yeah. places. So then the other question is, okay, so for small, we want to make it by right up to a certain size. Mm -hmm. The large is special permit everywhere, except for industrial zone where it's like by right. Do we want to change that? Do we want to make it by right anywhere? Or are we comfortable with special permits for large and, um, and then... I mean, I, I, commercial is it? Where was it? So large is by right in commercial? In no, industrial, sure. which I think. Um, I'm sorry, it's allowed by special permit in commercial. 
No. no. Right. Oh, it, it, you, you can get it by right. special, special permit. permit. Yeah. It's allowed by right in industrial. So the one that we had struggled with was the extra large. The, the extra large. Was extra that? large no. is no everywhere except industrial. Right. That's the one we. So that's, that's oh, really? the that's quarry. The, well, that's, that's the one we got struck, that we struggle with. And I think that's one we we'll have to look at. So why do we not allow extra large anywhere else? Is that something we should consider? What if someone wants to convert their farmland over to a solar field? Right. Who? And the one we had in front of us was just under 10 acres, so it fit. If they wanted to do right. 12 acres, it so wouldn't have. So, um, what was the what was the rationale? I don't remember. For 10. Probably because uh, people would be upset that the whole landscape is changing into solar. That's the only thing I can think of. I think that's I think that's right. I think that the idea was that um, it's a rural, it's an agricultural town. Solar is not necessarily an agricultural change in nature. Various areas um, that commercial areas solar doesn't bring jobs, so commercial areas that would be already taken up by solar would not then be available for other opportunities. So if you had an ideal spot that could be developed, but suddenly you just throw up solar and then we're good. So that that would. I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that that's part yeah, of the Yeah, I'm sure we were probably, well, I was probably on the board when that got yeah, drafted. Yeah, we're all there for that, so. I, I mean, I'm just, I'm conjecturing. I think that when we ran into this, that was the only thing I could think of was that if you're putting up solar arrays in what is prime commercial spots, then you're losing opportunity for. How many commercial opportunities are we batting away that are dying to be in these spaces that could be used for... Well, it's interesting. We don't, we don't have a lot of commercial leaves right. on land in Deerfield, to tell you the truth. Okay. Most of it's phone, I would say. Most of it's what? Most of it's occupied, right? Most of our commercial... Pretty stores. much. Mm -hmm. yep. so, so, so if anything, this becomes an issue in residential agriculture, which is if a farmer has 100 acres, why can't they put, use 20 of it, you know, for a solar field? Right. And right now, they wouldn't be allowed to do that. So oh, okay. I can only use 10. I see what you're saying. But I should think they'd have the right to do that, I, I personally would say. That. So that maybe we want to change that one to a special permit. The problem here is that residential agriculture is both homes, yards, and farm fields. And that's why I think it's by special permit. Covers, well, right. we don't, it's not allowed, right? But, but that's what I'd say, by special permit. But should we even have an asterisk that says, it's, then, you know, only on we'd want to be large very lots. clear what the yeah. what the what the criteria was for spec for an, um, yeah. allowing or disallowing that right. special permitting i think that that would be very touchy yeah. since we're we're opening all these cans of worms that's worms. you know i can see a scenario where what we went through on set right road where there's a lot of people that can see these and i can i can understand them being upset if they're looking down over 20 or 30 acres of these shiny panels um, but I don't believe that you should make a rule or a law so restrictive because there could be another opportunity in town where a guy has 30, 40 acres of field that's surrounded by mountains and woods that nobody ever sees. Right. And then you like say, well, why can't we put one up here? Nobody's going to see it unless you're in a hot air balloon. And yet, well, our bylaw doesn't allow that. So. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if it becomes a, a, a form of d d discrimination because you're not going to let this guy with 20 acres because it's open in the view of the public versus the guy whose land is hidden, well, I don't know. And there's a possibility that those, those I mean, I'm not thought about this, but you do have in some towns a, what do you call it, a view tax, kind of a, yeah. you know, where there's a certain properties that have, uh, yeah. they're valued at a, that I don't view. think we have a view tax. So I, don't, I don't think we do no, either, no, but all I'm saying no, is that that's, no. That's right, right, but it comes into play to, the value of that piece right, of property. Right. I understand. It's a counter to the idea. But that what you're saying, Kip, is so if I was a farmer and I wanted to put up a uh, hundred acres, and we, you know, if it's hidden, it's okay. Well, I'll just plant a bunch of big pine trees around the perimeter, and there I go. I can put a hundred acres up because nobody can see it. Then, then maybe that's okay. That is okay. That is yeah. If the if the big if, to me, you know, and the ones that we've worked on, the biggest complaint with solar has always been the visual aspect. No, I, by some I, people. And the the yeah, agricultural kind of 
you know, the smell of the silage and the, you know, you know driving around a tractor, right? everybody loves that. You said they're going to put yeah. trees in and they'll <laughs> grow and blah, blah, blah. All the time. Yeah. Fertilizer plants, I don't know. So, I, so I'm just looking at this. So the only place would probably, like CVRD, you're not going to allow no. 20 yep. acre no. fell on the CVRD. So that stays a no. C1 and C2, I think it's at your point where you'd rather have commercial Ventures retail right production, so you mm -hmm. might want to keep that no. But so it's really residential agriculture, and um, well, we have EPD. But there's here, but some property in the Center Finish. Village District. There's, well, well, I'll use the condo project that's going on. They could have put a big solar field there, and that was like 10 or 15 acres. They you could. Know? Is that CVRD or? or yep. Yeah. Well, CVRD. Yeah. Yeah. CVRD, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and there's other property that's they large could. like that yeah, yeah. in this. So Center we want to say it's a potential special permit there, too? Then? No. <laughs> I mean, I agree with you. That would have been a prime opportunity. And then there also over on um, um, the hillside. When you're going up hillside opposite, uh, he might have that property. Right, and he's looked at what to do with that property. He could put solar in there. But I'm not sure, Rachel, because the way that Center Village District goes, sometimes it goes along North Main Street and it doesn't branch oh, out. Behind yeah, it is yeah, our yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mostly we're talking so about. So that's why I think no. Well, CVRD so doesn't have to be. Let's just stick to our is, yeah, yeah. is that not the present? I and think you're right. Some, uh, and the sewer sure is part, part of it. Yeah. You know. Okay. I guess okay. it's hard for me to prioritize what someone thinks is pretty or not because it's such a, a objective thing, and to right. put that over someone's financial well-being or the obvious econ ec ecological impact seems trivial to me. Well, well, we would you want a new plant next to your house? Well, that's a different story. Well, I, but I'm just, I'm just wise, saying, you know, would you, would you want to have, to have a digestible like impact that's has, very yeah. different? That doesn't yeah. leach anything into my drinking water. It was just, so I, I agree with you in the sense that it, it seems very, but it, since we know that there are very disparate senses of what, how, uh, we really know this because this, this project that we had, a, a wide range of um, neighbors protested this mm -hmm. solar array. Yeah. And mm -hmm. we passed it because uh, in, we did. In, but, in the uh, same token, I mean, we just got through talking about the Dollar General store. People don't lot. like it. It's a little square building. And right next door, you got Yankee Candles, got 26,000 yeah. of a steel square building, and that's yeah. acceptable. So. Yeah. So I, would, the, uh, <laughs> so I would request that we all read section 3800 because we took a lot of things already. We have a lot of things, like if we're going to approve a special permit, it's got to meet all these kind of criteria. Right. So it's not arbitrary. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's some subjective, but it's pretty well listed out here. Um, so I think we should oh, go through that and see if there's changes to that. But right now, we're just saying that it's mostly the size. That's what we want to change the most. And then potentially leaving, making it as well, we don't permit. necessarily want to change the size. We want to remove the electrical remove the, generation. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And I thought that was going to be the easy one. I know. Yeah, I know it. So I think then the big well, question is, is, is it, should we make it a special permit in RA for larger, for the extra light? All right, so that's a list of questions we have for the uh, public hearing. That's good. That's what we want. Yeah. Um, so that's, so everybody read through section 3800 next time. Yeah. Look at the children's balls too. All right, I'm wondering if we should just talk about uh, relative to um, any changes we might want for marijuana cultivation and sales, because we might have some participation from our, from our uh, audience yes. members. <laughs> But they're not. They want to restrict it everywhere. Is well, what they want. They're, <laughs> but they're not town townspeople. One is. That is. Well, okay. Yeah, I mean, we our public meetings. I don't think we discriminate. Discriminate. I hope we don't. Yeah. I like to have people from outside of town come. So, um, what what are the thoughts on this? Is that we? Um, well, I well, I have one thing that kind of bothered me with our last one is I don't think any any parcel of land that has received any tax relief, whether through an APR or something like that, should be considered as part of the lot for the open space. So we, the town, and, and, and I'll be very selfish about this, I spend way too much money every year providing money to 
preserve open space. And yes, it can be considered open space, but still it, it's now counted as part to allow other space to be, I'm not gonna use the word overdeveloped because I don't think that's proper, but you know, to allow a larger facility to go here just because now we're using this protected land. Um, and isn't there already some precedent about wetlands? Wetlands, I thought they can't be, is that one that can't be used? Well, wetlands, yeah. I you, don't you, think in our community, some communities, you're right, John. But not in ours. Not in ours, they can be, yes. We can count wetlands as part uh, of, as part of open space. Impervious. But in like Northampton, I North think, Hampton, was, was yes. the one that we were thinking of. And, 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 I, and I can kind of see that too, because if you have a field and there's wetlands there, I don't see why, why you can't though. count that mm -hmm. area. But it, it just, if, as a community, if we really want to protect open space, and you know, we, we've got all these bylaws that you can only put so many square feet on a parcel of land. I agree with then, you, Kip. I think then just probably children. other members agree with you because that was a big issue yeah. this last time around, and it didn't yeah. seem fair to get around zoning with, and there's another one of our state agencies, they wouldn't even, they, they just sat there and didn't say a word, and it's right. like, Jesus, come on. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but the state pretty much does what they want. They flooded the back of my property on Conway Street from 5 and 10 bypass. Well, build a dam. I should. <laughs> I should. Get some concrete, I mean, those. Just uh, fill the tubes Get those up. steel pilings and, and just put them in front drive of it right into the ground. <laughs> yeah, they got a 12 inch conduit coming right off the, right off the highway and dumping into the back there. They got a hole. They got a hole coming in the in the side of the road there. I got, I've been after them to fix it. There's okay, something we're, we're getting off the subject though. Yeah, go ahead. So we're only really, we're only talking because we have independent testing product manufacturers. So we're talking cultivate. I don't want to. Retailers not allowed anywhere. Do we want to change right. that? No. 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 Nope. Nope. That's all right. That's already that said. To, we we can only have money. one place, right? No, Except we want in the, um, them. We just only well, want them. The we want them right. in the overlay district. Um, we don't want them. So marijuana cultivation right now, it's special permit in our downtown. We don't necessarily want them downtown. And an industrial are okay and, um, plan industry. No. They're there. Well, I, I was reading somewhere. <laughs> add bars. Go I was ahead. reading add somewhere bars. today just add bars. That, that there's places where there's so much cultivation that they can't sell it within their areas, so they don't know what they're going to do with it. And it's just started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Say that again. Demand. That's it's pretty that, simple. That's that, their prices. They're, 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 uh, there's places where they're growing so much marijuana in their geographical area that they, they don't have customers for it. So, well, Kim, a, where do we go to add or take yeah. away your, this we issue? Where, this I'm trying to think where it's written. Um, I don't think that's really written. It's more I don't either. Because, I think it's wide open as far yeah. as I can. Yeah. And that's, yeah. and that's why. Right. Even it's RA, I, I don't think it, Yeah, I don't believe it belongs in RA because you end up with these huge buildings to process it and stuff. So once it does get saturated, like Paul's talking about, what happens with these big buildings when those companies say, I've had enough, I made my millions. I would actually back. like some more specific information on what you're talking about, like where it is yeah. happening. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure. It could, it could be Colorado. It could be anywhere that's, that's legalized marijuana. And I saw it on the, it, 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 in a newspaper. I, don't know, was it I guess we just, was it in the, the issue report? is that we really just need to look down the road. I mean, that's that's yeah. what you're pointing to, Paul, is that you need at a certain point you need to decide, you know, down the road. It's one thing when it's exciting new, yeah. You know, it's moving here and there, and it looks very. But what are the what, looks are the, what is the profitable. next level? Right, so when it be, becomes not profitable, what happens with these big, huge buildings they use to process it? Well, supposedly they're temporary. Just take them down. Isn't that, isn't that what the deal is with the not, not green, these, green not houses? Those. Green houses are different. I'm talking about the building they're, they're putting up to process it, not grow it. Some buildings will be built up, built mm -hmm. to grow it in, but the one we went through, they're using greenhouses, but they're putting up a big building to process it. Mm -hmm. So this is maybe a warehouse, no windows in it. You know, you were there. So we get the dimensional requirements, and that's, I think, what we're... We're talking about what here it says that all um, dimensional requirements for this will be the same as section 2300 and that's where you get into that um, the lot uh, maximum lot coverage by impervious surface that's what that's 
what we're talking about. I think. Right. And so an RA uh, maximum lot is thirty percent. Um, so that's why they needed more more land. But yeah, but what Kip is saying, it was land that was protected. It was supposed to be open space or right. farmland. And now they're using it to circumvent. Well, I'm zoning. saying, how do we change your bylaws so that doesn't happen? That's what I'm looking for. How do you plug that into? I your think zone? all you have to do is just say any land that has been has right. a deed restriction of open space or farmland, whatever terms you want, cannot be used or applied toward a relief from zoning issues or regulations. I mean, the other thing we could do is is say that they only they can use sixty percent of the property. Something. They don't need as much imperative service, which is what we do. I'm confused commercial. about what the goal is. That's yeah, I think that's true. That's the goal. So what my, is goal, the goal? my goal, I'm bringing it up because I I think that we have, in leaving it so broad, open, and we have not considered what we want this potentially to look like, like five and ten, for example. You know, um, where do we see? Where do we see um, Pioneer? What we have so far, it's all falling, like it's what I conceive. So I want to know why it's, where okay. it's going to go that I'm not conceiving of. That's okay. my problem. So this, you see what I'm saying? Let's just use this scenario. Yeah, go. go down the road about a quarter of a mile from where the proposed Dollar General store is. Mm -hmm. Toward, to the north. Right. Where they're putting their store now, there's an acre and a half. They could go to the north, where there's a there's a building lot. You mean to the south then? No, to the north. Okay. You get up north, almost okay. across the street from where my property is. Okay. There's a building lot there, but it's really too small. But behind it, there is farmland. That's not an APR, but it is in yes. 61A. Okay. Perfect. So this Perfect. landowner could now go to that farmer and say, "Look it, sell me off five acres of your chunk of farmland, right. and I'll give you." right to farm it for the next hundred years. Right. Now he comes to the planning board and says, hey, I've got you know, all this land here and I'm gonna put up this big building here. Do you know where that property is? That's right. Anyway, it's on the left side. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. So yeah. we just shoot down RA cultivation. But then we, that's, have, we still that's have to have it somewhere though. Right, but. Yeah, put it in, in Make more it, of a commercial or industrial setting. Commercial industrial. That's the, the, that's you true. let the genie out of the bottle when you allow yep. uh, cultivation in RA. Yep. Well, yeah. but if you came to the public hearings when we were doing this, everybody said we want our farmers to be able to take advantage of this. Well, not right. everybody. And, they are. Not everybody. Everybody. and, and we all voted on it. Like like yeah. <laughs> so that's why we put it in RA without much, with not as much restriction. Every time so I heard it, I voted no. Yes. <laughs> But I also think that we and got to I the point where we were, we're you know what, at the time we were also talking about the moratorium. We were, we were very, at cross purposes at that point. And we got to the, like, okay, let's and just grow it anywhere. And I think that the thing was, and we were also, we had done a lot of work already on the medical marijuana before, so we were, we were That was the overlay that, district. Right, and we were counting out retail, so we, we right. felt like we had some hands on that. And we uh, had some understanding of what that would look like. But then we farmers. don't, and it doesn't look like farming. It isn't farming. Right. So I'm saying, the Kip's, Kip's point, to, to Kip's point of that property right there, um, could that end up being, could that end up being, uh, you know, a grow, a grow site? Well, what but, I'm, well no, he's no, no, talking I'm, about I'm not any kind of, any right. kind of I'm not, I'm not. He's talking about any commercial application. Right. I'm not right, 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 pointing right, right, this right, right, toward right, right. the marijuana thing. Now I'm you're, pointing you're broadening this. It. There's, right. a, there's a hole in our zoning. Or our bylaws. Because what Kip that, is saying, there yes. might be ten, uh, I don't know, three thousand square feet right. of commercial property, but then you could jump out of that into RA and put into it. But it's it's residential agricultural. Yep. But he would have the square footage, yep. so he could like get around that. Right. right, right. Well, there's a lot of loopholes that we could talk about. Right, I mean, right, and right. that's so a very good go. point. But is it a loophole or it's, or it's, it's a loophole? Okay. But it's also market forces because you're very pro landowners ought to be able to do with what what they want with their land. So why are you right. saying that this farmer who instead of plowing a few of these acres wants to sell it to someone else? Why can't they do that? Because we're trying to make because the land is protected. Yeah. 
and as you know, taxpayers, we pay money to keep our town a farming community. And so you so, could use APR or 61A, anything that was in So you, the what I'm saying, you should not be able to right. do Yeah, that. but 61A is a temporary thing. Sem te 61A is a temporary thing. So, so how would we fit that into the budget? So we would just say APR land cannot be used to, to meet um, impervious service? Or cannot be cannot added. Be yeah, I mean, if I you want to really protect it and get out of that loophole is if the land is not zoned commercial, you cannot be taking that RA land and lumping it in with commercial property. So you got five acres. So then the well, that, the acreage um, that you do have in commercial can be just totally well. That would covered. work for commercial, but it wouldn't work for marijuana because we don't consider also, that as a commercial thing. Right, I know, RA, but I mean, I'm saying marijuana should be in a commercial or industrial place. Because typically what's going to happen is you're going to have big buildings there to process this stuff. Yeah. So it's not, uh, you know, yes, there's potato storage or tobacco storage as there used to be, but there, you don't see them on every farm. So you're, are you thinking that we should go back to the voters and say that we should change it from the RA district to only Definitely. commercial districts? You, it doesn't belong in the RA. The, the only argument I, that I remember I here is we were supposed to be helping out the farmers. I know that, and I, 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 and I said I want to help the farmers, but yeah. that isn't the way to do it, really. I don't well, know how I don't we help And also, either. that's not helping farmers by restricting resident. I mean, if resident, if the farmer wants to sell his property to a commercial lo a commercial entity, I know, that's, it, but their, Rachel, that's their 501k, as we But you know, if, we you, if you live next to that place, we could have protected the people that Living we're going to protect yeah, everybody yeah, yeah. and we're going to give them yeah, the yeah. farmers the right to do what they want yeah, with their yeah, land yeah, yeah, yeah. but if you bought into a situation where you didn't expect a, a big huge building because it's right. only a small right. thing so you're not really protecting right, everybody right, right. i don't know how you do it fairly well right and you can't annex like you can't annex ra property it's still zoned ra even if you've annexed it on right so can you that's the issue. That's but what that's what Kip said. Somebody yes. could come in and yes. do that. And so that would make more sense. Now I'm, I'm with you. I yeah, get it now. If it's square footage it used yes. to meet the commercial, the yes. commercial use, yeah, okay. then it should be commercially zoned. Uh, exactly. I, I, yeah, agree. Okay. I agree. I agree. I agree. Yep. I agree. Totally. It should be as a, as a unit yep. with that use. So I, again, would but this is not encourage about us all to read section 4660, which we spent a lot of time on. And a lot of this stuff we talked about is there's a lot of sort of protections because it's special permit. Yep. So this describes it, and it says that the planning board may impose restrictions, all this stuff, to protect public interests, satisfy the purpose and intent of the but, you thing. Know, we, that, we can that, change setbacks. It says, you know, we can do all that stuff. And that's good, so. and, and I have read that. But, you know, in the case where, the case that we dealt with, even though I was greatly opposed to it, I still had to endorse it because there was nothing wrong with it. Right. I mean, morally it was, but legally it, it, it was correct, you know? And yeah, they, so it was it was yeah. tough for me. No, I didn't. Who is it morally like it, wrong I to? What, I'm, you know, I don't think that you get to decide what's morally well, correct for everybody that, in the town, though. I mean, it, that's you. It's but not me. And I and I said that I did. I believe I did the right thing, and I supported the law and all the rules. There was nothing but saying they was, couldn't do what they did. That's what kept that's saying. what I'm saying. And well, I, I just and think I it points to a bigger this sort of like what I hear as a new member is a lot of we don't want this at all in our town, and let's find a way to make sure it doesn't happen. Mm. No, I don't. I don't think I don't that's. Think. What well, we I'm just telling you that's yeah. what I hear. Well, yeah, I we're not. We're funny, not. I mean, I, I feel like at the time we were struggling. We had a, townspeople who came to us and said, "We want. We want a um, moratorium. We want to. Yeah, we want. We want to bring it to the vote. We had to. The select board um, wanted. Did not want to bring it to the town. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Like uh, South Hadley." They voted to withdraw from, mm -hmm. right, okay. So we, we were in that. Okay. We were in that very much, because not everybody here necessarily voted to legalize recreational marijuana right. in the state. Once it was voted on, then that's our job. We right. all, so we didn't all have to love the fact that recreational marijuana is, so you may be hearing residual pieces of that, that we're not zinged up about uh, recreational marijuana being as, lively in our town as it is now you know it's but i hear words place. like loopholes and morals and things it has you know what i mean that's my concern that maybe it is kind of personal to some people and maybe not everybody has that objectivity about it's just a crop it's just well, no one but the thing is is like 
what happened on Mill Village Road can happen again on Route 5. It could happen yet again right down there. It could, it could happen 15 times in the next year. And what's happening is the, all these projects started as a farming thing, which is by right. The new big farm that's being put up, all these big greenhouses, they never even came to us about anything. And that's why I'm saying if we're really worried about stormwater, here you are, you've got another 80,000 square feet of buildings over ground, and they didn't even have to come to the planning board. And yet when that's Most all farmer, done, when farmer. that's all done, they could turn around and sell it to another growth facility. You see what I'm saying? And, and then they take that money the and go down, because <laughs> they own more land, and keep doing this, and they could do it all over. So now we have to take a look as a planning board, how do we control this? I, I want to just say that they're, even though they didn't have to come to us for stormwater permit, they still have to meet a lot of regulations right, and keep the water on their site and everything. So they, they, there is still laws in place to make sure they, you know, they're really? not Really? Who's going to enforce permit. that? Well, that's partly <laughs> gets into monitoring and inspection, but I just, it's not like it's because you don't monitors and inspection. Just because you don't come who monitors and inspection. But it's just like you're not supposed to text uh, on your phone and drink uh, and drive. Okay. And, it, it just, <laughs> and just second thing, but, no, but I just want to put these. I know. Who is it that monitors? The other thing is, John, John, who is it that you say monitors this? Who uh, monitors the, 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 the building inspector and the other people, officials here, and that's a whole other issue that's we very important. We can't even get it to do uh, the stuff that we pass out of here with stormwater. How do you expect to I figure hear. that that's going to happen I there? I just was raising an issue that there are other well, laws I think, here. I think so. you're a fallacy in when you're, what you're saying. So I you're don't telling think me it's, there aren't other laws. There's not things that they're supposed to I'm, do when they go I'm out. saying that in reality it's not being okay, covered. I didn't say reality. I said that I, we Well, that's what we're talking about, We have some zoning bylaws. We're talking about reality and what happens what really happens? I expect people to obey our bylaws when they build something, even okay. if they don't come to the right. planning board. Well, then let's not have any zoning. Let's just let people do their own well, good work to do it. Well, uh, we're saying we should have zoning. I, 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 I'm, I'm finished. I don't need to say anything more. And Kip, the other thing, um, you're, you're right. <laughs> Maybe they could come to us, but we would have to approve it with a special permit if they did want to sell the place they're building to another, to another grower. So it, it's, a, it's not by right anywhere, right? Yeah, it is. Residential agricultural is by right. No, it's by special permit. Yeah, it's oh, special, special permit. permit. It's all special right. permit. Okay. It's all special permit, even in the overlay district. Permit. I so, think that it's potentially so. that it's the restrictions on special permitting that we need to work on. But it'd be very hard to stop it, I think. How well, do you think deny it? We can't deny, deny. A, We can't deny a, anything. Yeah, site plan review, you can't. <laughs> but, site, but special permit, you can. Special permit's a lot easier to deny. Well, maybe. Uh, yeah, well, so yeah and then, then they, Adam has said they, it is because it's much more, more about the character than we of the. Uh, no, health you know, and safety were the we two wanted areas. To go that was the easiest. So this APR thing, Kip, I, I keep want to come back because if that nah. is something, at the same time, that APR land is going to stay in agriculture. So I, I, like, I don't have a moral issue with it because it's still going to be used for the purpose it was used for, even though now it's owned by someone different. And it, you know, they're kind of using it for two things. They're using it for their impervious surface. Um, and they're using it for agriculture, but it's still agriculture. Yeah, but you changed so that area over. that was sort of protected over, yeah, you know. to look totally different than it was by letting them do that. Why so? It's part of the site. It's part of the site. And if, if that wasn't... Right, that that building be, wouldn't be there yeah. if that land wasn't attached to it. Or they right. could... But how that, can I make it clearer? But that it's APR, part of the site. And the APR land is still used for agriculture. Right, but it but is, it is part of the commercial site. Right, I don't disagree with that. So okay, they, should be taxed itself. that way, and it should be dedicated to that purpose. To you the, can't they, have it we, both ways. They do, they and get, they do. They get a huge discount on the taxes because the APR land is not, not taxed. Right, taxed. Yeah. it's not as valuable. As if, it, if that was not APR land, the town would probably get in the vicinity of four thousand dollars a year. And because it is, we probably get hundred dollars. So you think there's a way to insert in this um, that we prohibit the use of APR land as for as marijuana as establishments? As well. I mean, we could easily add a sentence like that. That's it doesn't that have to be, be marijuana. I don't think, I think it, it should marijuana. be. It should, it should be, be commercial. It's, any, it's really about APR. Any, it should not be able to anything other than it should not be used for anything other than agricultural purposes. Right. That's the point of the APR. Own because yeah. it, it That's like I say, it's pure it's pure agricultural. It has to be owned by. What's the difference between use and ownership? That's what I'm trying to yeah, yeah, grow yeah. down here. This yeah, yeah, yeah. is real things. Max, you've got to participate in this. It's owned by the, owned by the farmer. 
You see what I'm saying? Oh, you gotta, what words can we use that work that get to what you're trying to do, but also the fact is it is still used for agriculture. But so we're saying it can't so be combined. Else it should is be. It? It, it should be fenced off and mowed. You know, if, if it's, it's not its purpose is to fulfill the the runoff of the impervious surface. If they don't have a site, you know, you can't have multiple use. Well, in this case, are I they going to uh, do we restrict irrigation on it because now we're adding water to a site that's supposed to be absorbing the water from the impervious surface? You know, do we restrict the irrigation? No, we should. If you're going to do that, well, number one, just back up and say, okay, RA was a big mistake for cultivation. But, okay, we can't have that. So what do we do? We create a commercial zone in our RA district, and that should be a commercial zone. End of story. This, this is your, you know, whatever your size is, and that's all it can be. You fence it off, you mow it, you let the water from the impervious surface go into that land. That's it. And it's all taxed at that commercial rate. I, I well, don't know how to make it clear. Because I think in Northampton, they have, and it's not, not the whatever, the state thing. They have a rule, or they voted it in, that APR what? land cannot be used to what circumvent uh, zoning Regulations. Wetlands can't be included. I think right. it's very specifically wetlands. Right. Can't yeah. Be and included. wetlands and that you could stuff. Say, you could add wetlands and ABR land if you wanted to. If yes. You wanted to. Okay. Okay. I don't know. So I guess I just want to also say that in this RA, we're saying that only 30% can be impervious, whereas other commercial areas, they, don't, they can have up to 70%. Correct. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, not to defend it, I just want to make a case that I don't think they're actually dumping much water from the, the new building there onto that. APR then they're not dumping any. Right. That's my whole so point. So they don't really need. So what I'm saying is they don't even. They didn't even really but, but need see, that. But see, but you open this can of worms but because we asked if, for it because they need 70 percent. Well, no, but if, right? but then the argument could be, no. I, as a resident, I could say, so you've been telling me all these years this whole thing about 70 percent open is a bunch of BS. So you know why even have it? Why can't you just cover RA with 70 percent? You know that that's you know. You kind of go down that road. Women say that again. Why can't? You well, I, what John why do was we saying need, is yeah. why do why did we even need that? Because they are not using it for that, only to meet the bylaw of having you know. Because already we wanted more open space. We want more open space. Right. So, but if you if you change that, because in you know self admitting, I, oh, I knew that for, change it, but, or, but I, I knew right from the get go that water is never going to get over there, yeah. and, mm -hmm. and there was a reason why it was yeah. done that way, mm -hmm. uh, but. Uh, then one could argue is like, well, it's it's too restrictive anyway. You know, it should only be fifty or sixty percent or mm -hmm. whatever. So we do have some focus on the, the public. With this, it's not a public hearing, but we're always interested in what people have to say. And you, you guys have <laughs> no this business. Anything that anything uh, to say? Sure. <laughs> um, <clears throat> well, I, I saw that the subject was on the agenda tonight. When I see the words Deerfield and marijuana, you're, you're same here. sentence, I have to be here. Um, I, I don't want to, you know, relitigate this issue you've been discussing. Uh, I think I've heard a lot of it before. Um, I would only, to that point, ask you to consider, as Rachel mentioned, I mean, what are the purposes here? What What is the threat to the public health, the public safety, and the character of the community that's impacted by this policy? And I would just suggest that you keep those goals in mind. That's really what the broad purpose of zoning is, to protect the public health, the public safety, and the character of the community. And if you use open space to provide, to ensure open space, it seems to me that doesn't threaten any character. It doesn't change anything. But Yeah, it does change the character. Well, from, from the aspect of public health, I don't think it does. From the aspect of public safety, I don't see it. Well, we're, not, we're not talking about public health or safety. We're talking about the characteristics. Okay. okay. So an empty lot used for for uh, to offset the uh, um, the uh, area is still an empty lot. Right. But it doesn't. It looks the same. It's an ag field. It's still an ag field. And, and that's but true. It, it, but it if that totally ag, changed the it uh, changed the land the next property. to it because now that other building gets to be much bigger because this was able to be counted. 
Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm saying is not, I don't, I don't think that it's right. Um, you know, and, but here again, I, it's, it's not what I want, it's just my opinion. And uh, a lot of people want to see the open space stay that way. So I'm just trying to figure out a way to, you know, get the best of both worlds if you can. You know, I, and I just see this type of scenario could continue to happen. And, you know, if, if the community as a whole doesn't mind it, then so be it, you know. Because I mean, all, any of us, all we're going to do is present ideas. It's still going to be up to the public to, you know, mm -hmm. right. uh, mm -hmm. vote on it. So, yeah. Well, uh, to change the subject slightly, I, I uh, was under the thought, I heard perhaps that you guys might be considering a broader relook at the, at the marijuana zoning laws. And I think it's a good time to do that, personally. Yes, um, for the principal reason, I think your marijuana zoning bylaws are pretty complicated. And, and especially having one set of laws rules for medical marijuana and another for right. recreational or non-medical marijuana, when the plant and the substance and the product are identical, really doesn't make a lot of sense. And I, and I, I, wanted to, I came here, I wanted to say that if you are considering a broader review of the marijuana zoning, I, I'd be happy to be of any assistance. You know, I'm been spending the last six months with it, like you have, and uh, I'd be happy to be on a committee or provide whatever assistance I could uh, to to achieve a broader review. I, I think your 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 zoning your marijuana zoning laws could be greatly simplified. I, you know, I've looked at a lot of zoning bylaws for lots of towns over the last year or two, and I'd say yours are among the more complicated and more difficult to navigate, but. So much for that. And I want to mention, too, that, that uh, there's been some discussion among the folks that are, that are operating the, the uh, Mill Valley, uh, Mill Village Road facility, which my clients have got the zoning uh, special permit on. Um, there's been talk about the possibility of using that, that land to do uh, product manufacture. I've mentioned this before. That is to, to include something like a commercial kitchen. The word product manufacture is kind of scary, but what it refers to is the making of edibles and, and uh, things like that. And it really it involves a commercial kitchen, probably a quarter the size of this room. It really doesn't require a lot of space. Uh, but that, I didn't come here to talk about that. I just wanted to say that that's on our, that's on our wish list, so to speak, and I might be back to you with discussing that further. But uh, so... Uh, so here's a question yeah, for yeah, you. Uh, where have you, what other towns have you um, seen some good bylaws? Seen some bylaws yeah. that you found different from ours in what way? Oh, uh, well, I, my favorite is, is Ashfields, frankly, which provides quite simply that if anybody wants to conduct a commercial operation anywhere in town, whether it's for marijuana or anything else, you got to get a special permit. And subject to the usual special permit rules. It's about as simple as you can. You gotta remember what side of the table he sits on. Oh, I, I, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I know, I know, I know. I, mean, I'm not, I'm not, I haven't missed that. I just think it would be kind of still just, interesting. And I, I don't try to justify our bylaws, but you know, as small as Deerfield is, there sure is a lot of politics that go on here. <laughs> and, and that, Have you, know, you noticed? I'm shocked, Dick. Shocked. And, you know, when, when an idea comes up and it gets through being chewed by everybody and they compromise on this and compromise, I, that's where we're at, you know? And I mean, the state themselves sure didn't help a lot. I mean, you know, the things were changing all the time. The process to get anything through a town government is slower than all. Heck, and right when you think you're on this track, they pull the bridge out in front of you, you know, so. I, <clears throat> We're in the middle of the awkward interval, the yeah. span of yes. time between prohibition yep. and normalization. Yep. Yeah. It's, everybody's on a steep learning curve. Right. It's new to all of us. Uh, there's a lot of confusion. We'll it's get not to new this. to you. You've been doing this for a long time. Well, <laughs> I... Years, but not decades. Well, actually, I have been, I've been advocating been for been reform oh, okay. for about 40 years. But uh, it's only been a couple of years. That, well, and the uh, same is true. The same is true for solar. I mean, that's yes, the same. yes. So I'm just. But curious. anyway, so if I can be helpful, and I, and I mean that genuinely, I'd like to be helpful to you. Well, I'm curious also because we you've heard some discussion here about how you know people are going to build these things and then they're not going to make money, so they're going to close. Are you making any more predictions now than you did a year ago about? Uh, it's a good question. 
that? No, I, I, I haven't seen any close yet. I, I don't think it's going to be the the the. Um, you know, it's going to be you know, like the gold everybody, rush, it's like not a, a lot of rush. people thought it was. Right. I haven't seen any. Every every planning board I've been before, uh, and I've been probably five or six or seven since you saw me last, um, has raised the what happened in Northampton on open day at Nettle. Right. They had all the traffic right. jams, right. and, right. and but, but but my office is right next door to that building, oh. and there haven't been any lines since then. Yeah, it's, no it's, porta potty it's, is gone. Even that, yeah. Still a lot of hubbub down by that area. There well, was. It yeah. still is. I went by it just recently, and it's like... Yeah, well, you just see people carrying white bags. Northampton's very crowded. crowded. But, but there hasn't been any, many real disturbances. See, I, kind of, I guess I kind of feel like I think our bylaws did exactly what we kind of wanted. Was, yeah. we, get, we got two cultivators, and you got one uh, processor and retail that have been licensed, and maybe that's enough. You know, maybe uh, that's just a good moderation. Yeah. But pro don't, so, careful with that word processor, uh, because technically... Processes. Cultivation and processing. I know. I, 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 I think it's the, the it's word we use here is why. Yeah. In our right. Do you? Uh, we permitted a, um, it's a product manufacturer. Yeah. Manufacturer. yeah. That's the technical. That's yeah. different yeah. than processing. Processing. Happens right. Everything. The, right, right. Processing Everything is, is part of the trimming, packing, cleaning. But as you remember, marijuana cultivator was a lot. We were. You know, when we had our special hearings and everything, public hearings, people were more okay with that. Yeah. Than they were the product manufacturer or the retailer. Yeah, so but I, I would hope that when we re, if, if we can revisit this, people's attitudes will change. Great Barrington, that's where they have they're like on fire. That's the new because everybody's coming over from New York. Oh, so they've got a tiny little town. They've got. A, are there oh, drafts? Oh, sorry. Are there drafts that you could send to us so that we could look at other examples? Yeah, so sure. Can, yeah, I'd be happy to Nashville. send you. Some, some other yeah. bylaws and some ideas. Yeah, so, like maybe yeah. from, you know, is most restrictive to something yeah, in the yeah. middle to least restrictive I, would be I, I, great. I appreciate the invitation. I'd be happy to do that. I would love to see that. Yeah. Um, Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Dick. So I guess how far do we want to, do we want to open it up, the whole redo our, because I, I mean, I think that is true, this um, the medical thing and ours is kind of yeah. even more complicated. We just, I think partly that was we didn't have time to bring all that together uh, when this was going forward. Why don't we approach the select board and have them uh, allow us to do both? Oh, that's right. They're the... Uh, right. Why not bring it on the board? Yeah. yeah. Well, we held on to that. I mean, that was, they wanted to, that. To, um, <laughs> right. The recreational. Yeah. So yeah. now they're split. It's not going to happen. Mrs. Ness made a big deal about it being public health, and they're the health board. Mm -hmm. Which is medical. So makes sense. that was the only. I don't understand what you're saying, Max. She made a big deal about what? I'm sorry. The medical marijuana being under the jurisdiction of the select board, okay. whereas okay. recreational marijuana uh, was retained. Okay, gotcha. Because we got stiff armed pretty much by the select board. Okay. And um, the okay. we resisted. Their efforts. Not all members, though. <laughs> <laughs> we resisted their efforts to take the recreational marijuana away from the planning board. You wouldn't give me rec recreational marijuana, Max? We would not <laughs> give them their marijuana. We would not give them their recreational marijuana. We held yeah. on tight. Right. So. I figured there was a bigger we, board. We should more pass it. The bigger board. Well, if we merge it, brought under the same board. If we merge them into one, then it, yeah, it right. should be on the one board. Unless there's separate health things that you think you Well, we would get, uh, we'd get, we would get a referral. We would be like the police chief. So we're debating on changing like the regulations and stuff on the grow. So should we put a moratorium in place till we come up with some? Because we are in discussion. That's what I, I agree with Roger. Yeah. I think that as we are in discussion currently, what we want to be, we want to think about how. We don't want to have to legislate something right now. If we're going to actively work on this to make it oh, we better, have to. then... But it's going to then, take several months, so you don't right. want... So we don't want, we don't want to somebody have, coming in with an application. Exactly. So I, that's, my, that's my concern right now. It's just mm -hmm. right now. I, just, I need a freeze frame until we figure out... Is there anything in the pipeline that's going to get pooched because of that? No, it can't. If there was something in the pipeline, we couldn't. Okay. So we won't need to gotcha. make a moratorium now before there is something in the... Okay, that's the, the makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. 
you can't start changing the rules when you already have an applicant. Correct. So no, the answer is. But there are there are inquiries and right. It's not we're not without. So that requires a, right. a, a public hearing. So I I would I think we should we should ask for that. I think that I just think that's a sensible thing. Right. Gives us we, some breathing space to do the, to. To from Anne Mary to talk to Dan to get more information. Dick, you know, help us along yeah, yeah, the yeah, path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 If, uh, don't we try to have something to give people well, if we're going to have an open hearing rather than let them develop it for us? That's what I think. Your sounds like you're saying. No, I'm saying we need the time to do the research and figure out what we want to put before the people. But if we're so, so I'm saying. Why? Public hearing is maybe premature at that point until no. we've done this, right? No, I think we have to have a, John is saying we have to have a public. In order to put the moratorium, moratorium in place. In place. To, oh, oh, the moratorium. The okay, all right, all right. I see what, I misunderstood what you're you talking right. about. That would require a vote of town meeting, wouldn't it? Public hearings and then uh, town meeting. Mm -hmm. Well, it's not, is it likely that your, if you did revive, Revise the uh, bylaws; they would be more restrictive, perhaps with respect to the, the, the issue we're talking about. But, yeah. but uh, you know, m my experience so far is that no town has really suffered any measurable adverse impact from the introduction of the marijuana industry. I haven't seen it yet. Not to well, it's yeah, that's new. To, it's yeah, it's new. Yeah, new to all of us and everything. Mm -hmm. but, but so far, so good. I mean, this, you know, well, there haven't been any major problems except for the traffic jams and that, that, that weird traffic place anyway. Yeah. That's a weird traffic. So I would it's encourage legitimately you to, terrible. to yeah. you know, uh, speak to your colleagues in other cities and towns and municipalities, I'm sure you're in contact with them, you know, find out what, what their experience has been. Because I, I think that many community, communities overreacted uh, <clears throat> when they adopted certainly mor moratoriums, but, but also very restrictive bylaws. I'm not saying Deerfield did, but uh, many towns did, and uh, we, we may have enough experience under our belt now that we can. It's time to a good time to take a fresh look at it. Does anybody know when we you have a town meeting in the fall? Who knows? We could have one no. next week. Yeah, we last week. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, good. That wasn't last week. Is it last week? Yeah. There'll be one in September, I'm sure. Or if that'd be too early to get this really well. Well, they're working on that other thing with. Um, Chris. Oh, right. The flood Anyways, plane. Yeah, yeah we, so, we do have a so couple they're, other So they're going to be doing so. that sometime. So that. This is where I just put another plug for administrative. This is where we often would use the fur cog or someone to help right. us kind of, because we, to make it fit our bylaws and be simpler, you need a professional. We're not going to do that. No. Um, well, let me ask you this. So when we, uh, when we hired uh, Ms. Smith, yeah. uh, she ha just happened to work for the, for Cobb. We never got any feedback, uh, or uh, not feedback is not the proper term. We never got any grief about hiring her to do that. Why don't we reach out to a law firm yeah. that could do this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The prices, maybe yeah, sure. it might be more, but can we use a couple thousand dollars that they gave in the community agreement to? I don't, don't ask me. Yeah, I know. He's off the I mean, that could be a, you know, I mean, it's all, I'm not it's all the same issue. So, uh, show yeah. anymore, so. Um, um, but I, I, I think that might be a way because it's, uh, I, I see, you know, it, it's hard for not only this board, a lot of volunteer boards yeah. to, you know, to pull information and make phone calls and get everything together. And if we don't have outside help, I just think it will just drag on way too long. Oh, absolutely. And, you know. And then if we just gave like some of our big picture, like we don't want to lose APR land, you know, we, yep. we, we could give some of those bigger picture and let yep. them do the detail yep. stuff yep. and then to merge the two, the medical and recreation, it makes sense. Why, why, uh, why don't we reach out to the COG again? We could, they don't, I don't know if they've They just did, hired they just finished people, a project in Shelburne Falls. I know they did, that was- They're not the meeting marijuana? for the summer. Yeah. They won't meet again until the fall. Who, the COG? Yeah. Well, no, we, we no, just hired no, someone. No, from the, oh, okay. the, gotcha. from the, not the meeting. The right. someone, who, someone who's done other marijuana bylaws. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. And she actually, who was Pat's boss? Peggy. Peggy's sort She of did. Back. She yeah. worked with. Um, Peggy Sloan. Peggy Sloan worked with. She Shelby. must have helped with the Ashfield ones. 
don't know. <laughs> no. She, she helped That's out. Where she lives, so I don't. She know. helped out. They had a quite a. They had quite a push and pull in Shelburne Falls, in Buckland Shelburne, and um, okay. so she she's fresh off of that. All right. Does anybody want to follow up with that? I will. And I, I don't know. Look up a, I mean, I don't too. Too. There's, there's a couple I'll, firms I'll, I'll, I'll out there too the that car. do it. So. I mean, I I just happen to be good friends with his partner, and they're. You know, Michael's been doing this for I don't know, 30 years, and so I mean, he's really up into it. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, I'll send you a long letter. With some <laughs> thoughts. Good. Yeah. Great. Yeah. And some samples of yeah. some bylaws. Oh, I thought you were sending us samples. No. <laughs> bylaws. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, wow. <laughs> Swag. Man, you're right up quick, I know. Quick. <laughs> any other uh, any other comments? All the pot Don't want to call on people. Uh -huh. <laughs> Got anything for us? Just listening. I mean, it's not like we need to stay here longer, but if you get something. Well, I'll speak as a president. Yeah. Um, I, th I would agree with some of the board members. Oh, you have to say your name. Matthew Plotkin. I think the, uh, the RA zoning for cultivation is not really a, a good move, and I would just say that. As a resident, you'll see these things, you know, popping up everywhere, and it's not really something that you want to be dealing with as a homeowner. What do you see popping up any, everywhere? I'm sorry. Gross. Gross. The cultivation. Okay. Cultiva yeah, exactly. Um, and then just as the broader sense, you know, uh, regardless of marijuana, I'm going to agree with what uh, what Kip had been saying about, you know, adding land. Is, you know, that's really not what we want to see going on. Um, you know, as you had said, as you go down Route 5, that can happen again and again and again because it has that, you know, RA land that backs up to it. Yep. So the only question is the overlay district is very restrictive. Yes. And some people <laughs> took advantage of it. <laughs> that is true. So um, that's, that's kind of the but other it's thing. Also I think our overlay was very small. A town of 5,000 yeah, We didn't realize that the industrial park was off limits. And if that was, if they could utilize that area, it wouldn't be so. Wouldn't be so Are you telling me you're seeing people cultivating pot in their, gar in their yards? Is that what you're saying when you're saying you're seeing no. these things pop up? He doesn't no. want to. Okay, because that's what confuses me. Are you seeing that or are you nervous about seeing that? No, I'm just speaking commercial only. Okay, all right. That's all we're talking about. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Yeah, he would, he's saying as a resident, he wouldn't like to see this pop up wherever there's a tenure. Right, the, yeah, I mean, our, the, our the term that he used confused me a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Use the, the ag loophole. To yeah, he's not talking about the six plants business. that. Right, that's I what I thought for a second. I was like, you know all these people? Okay. Right but he, just so you know, the background, he's involved with the one that is in the Overlake District. And it's okay. Atlantic very, Furniture. It's very restrictive area, so they got into the place that it's all... No one's arguing about kind of. Oh, so he's um, like, yeah, nobody else. Yeah, so if no one else came in, it's probably. Good. <laughs> Got it. Not well, necessarily. I don't think I mean, that's the only reason he's speaking. No, I, I, no, I mean, know. That's the truth here a lot longer than I'm being then. facetious. I'm yeah. sorry. Yeah. But that's, you know, we, everybody has a point. So, um, all right. So I think that's the big issue is the residential, not the overly district so much. Right. Oh, yeah. And, and you're right about, so the, the DDIC thing was just, we didn't know that was off limits, and wh whether it is or not, we still don't know. But right, that's what they're claiming. That's what because there's federal money or s yeah. something that's restricting. Well, D that. yeah, but yeah. There was so many years that DDIC kind of just slumbered, and then all of a sudden, for some reason, yeah. five years ago, it woke up. Yeah. Well, somebody wants to flex their muscles. I'm just pointing this out. <laughs> All right, we so I think we, we got some issues on the table, and Rachel will look into it, and you might look yes. into it. Thank you, Thank you so much. Uh, yep. So we'll reconvene on that one. All right. And I think it's getting Thank late. You, what time? Yeah. Uh, it's oh, it's block. nine. It's nine. It's nine. It's it's nine. nine. So, nine. I think next time we start with accessory apartments because we keep putting that off. Um, and that should be easy. 846. <laughs> 846 right now. It's 846. 847. Oh. Anything else? Uh, clock is wrong. We can't. No, clock is wrong. Clock I've been looking clock. at the clock oh, all the time. Yeah. Wow, it's still early. I just looked at my phone. It's 846. Wow. Any other burning issues before us? Burning issues? Is that. Issues. Um, the next 
normal meeting would be uh, Monday, August 5th. Is that, do we gonna have a quorum? Is that? I'm in. Summary. I'll be here. Well, I gotta say August that, that from my part, standpoint, when we start changing the date from the first Monday, oh. it causes me issues with yeah. trying to fit in. in. Yeah, so, no, we'd rather, unless, so we just unless we stick know to we're not going to get it. No, unless we know we're not going to get a quorum, we should definitely do it there. All right, we'll do it the 5th. August 5th. At 7 o'clock. At 7. And yeah, sorry, tonight's thing got, the executive session thing got, <clears throat> It kind of just got tossed in last minute last week, but I thought we got the word out to everybody. <laughs> and um, apolog to you. apologies <laughs> for me to be late and for others who didn't know about it. But I think we got the job done and we'll, we'll pick up on that another time. No other business? Is there a motion to adjourn? I'll make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? I love these unanimous.